Hi, my name is Jason Dunning. I work with Wilbur Ellis Company here at Grant, Michigan. Uh, today we're standing in a cornfield near Grant, uh, looking at a new pest called Western Bean Cutworm. Uh, this pest has been around for years out in the western states. Uh, it's dry beans have been uh, its main host, but now has also found its way into corn. Um, here in Michigan, uh, the Western Bean Cutworm has not been that big of an issue. Uh, it started first showing up about five years ago. Uh, the northern northern counties and the experts are saying it migrated across the lake most likely uh, you know flew across or possibly by storms uh, but that story has changed somewhat we, we now believe that it overwinters here uh, due to our trap counts that we're going to talk about in a little bit so this this moth is flying around currently um, started as early as uh, late June and will fly up through August 15th laying its uh, egg masses in the upper canopy of corn this egg mass usually typically you'll find you know in the upper four to five leaves of that corn and that egg mass is about a quarter in size and can have up to 30 to 40 eggs which will hatch over a 15 to 30 day period so as these eggs hatch the little larva will migrate its way down that that plant to the ear where it typically will bore into the ear approximately four to six inches up from the bottom which actually can go about any place in that ear then it will actually migrate up to the tip of that ear and be feeding around the top of that ear for uh, numerous days up to you know close to harvest you can find them in October still feeding. In terms of trap counts we have eight traps out in our local area here ranging from Ludington down to Sparta and Cedar Springs west to Muskegon and in these traps we've been getting uh, since July 1st when we placed them we've been trapping 12 moths per day on average some being higher and some being lower but definitely compared to last year our trap counts are way up and that is why we are very concerned with this pest. Now we're going to take a look at uh, the trap construction that we used here at Grant. Um, very simple milk jug, cut the sides out leaving about an inch and a half depth to the bottom for the antifreeze which will kill the bugs when they fly in here and then simply underneath the cap poking a, a paper clip through and sticking the pheromone on the bottom there and placing it back there will attract the male uh, western bean cutworms into this trap. So now let's talk about methods of control for the western bean cutworm. There really are two different ways to control it. Uh, one being a trait and the other spraying. Uh, in terms of spraying the western bean cutworm, the, the real trick is going to be getting good coverage on a ground rig. So either you're going to have to have a lift kit on the sprayer, get you a, you know, a good foot to two foot above that corn canopy to get good coverage or possibly you know uh, do an aerial application which in our area here we have a lot of smaller fields with uh, borders of trees and power lines so it's not a real effective option. Uh, the second option I mentioned was a uh, trait in the corn hybrid. Uh, Herculex will control 99% of the western mean cutworm uh, which you can also find that in the smart, smart stacks trait that uh, recently came out last year. Uh, with that, I appreciate uh, your attention. My name is Jason Dunning with Wilbur Ellis Company in Grant, Michigan. Have a good day.